Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Inshallah, today I'm going to be doing Juz 26. Um, from here on in the notes, I no longer cover from sore to sore because there's like lots and lots of sores in these Juzes now. So it's kind of like, although it would be awesome to go from Juz to Juz to, I mean, from sore to sore to sore, I didn't do that just because you'd have like a 20 page essay. And if we actually went in depth, with as much as we wanted to in this series, we would have like a freaking, sorry about that, a, like an 80 page essay. I think just with this stuff, we have over 70 pages. So if we actually went in depth, we'd have way too many pages. And plus, we always want people to actually read them rather than go through notes or just see little quick links to them because reading it is so much better than anything that anyone can say. So um, the video is also going to be a lot shortened or shortened in general um, due to this and plus I kind of only want to pick out certain things that I think are really awesome okay so in just 26 in Surah Muhammad I like when um, Allah tells us that those who do good will receive good and those who do evil will receive evil so basically we pave our own path to heaven or hell and I know that this sounds a lot easier and like okay we get it but Sometimes we find ourselves that we like to, I guess you can say, blame other people or blame the shaitan for everything that we do. But at the end of the day, if you're doing good, Allah is going to give you good. If you're doing evil, Allah is going to give you evil. And on the day of judgment, we're not going to be allowed to say, oh, well, you know, I did this bad. But you know what? That guy named Khalid did this and this and this. Or that girl named Khadija did this and this and this. At the end of the day, we're only accountable for what we do and we'll only be rewarded for what we do. And then Allah also says that if you help Allah, if you help him, that he will help you and he'll make your he'll make you strong in like your worship towards him. And we have to remember a name of Allah that Allah is always the appreciative. That like you know with human beings it's kind of like you'll go and you'll get your friend Starbucks. Oh wait, that's Haram. You'll go and get your friends, I don't know, Seattle's best or some kind of coffee and you're expecting them to be like, "Oh my gosh, thank you so much. Jazakumullahu khairan." Blah, blah. You expect them to be so happy. "Oh my god, my friend got me coffee." But they literally just take the coffee and they're just like, "Oh, cool." You see what I'm saying? This isn't with the law. A law, you do the smallest itsy bitsy thing and you'll see it. You'll either see it here or you'll see it in the hereafter. And so when a law says this, we have to remember that a law's promises are the best of promises. And the law's promise is the only promise that we can actually, like, legitly say, okay, this is going to happen. And so when a law says these things, we have to... It can't be a thing like, oh, well, it might happen. If Allah says it's going to happen, it's going to happen. So if Allah says that if you do good, you're going to get good, you're going to get good. It's not like human beings where, oh, yeah, you're going to get this and you never get it. Uh, I know that's kind of hard. I'm, I know I'm going, actually, I talk really fast. But um, I hope that that makes sense. And I hope that I kind of got across what I'm trying to say in the way that I'm trying to say it. And then another... Um, Oh my gosh. Uh, another sword that would be really great to read is Sword of Hujarat, especially with the um, the way technology is going where pretty much people blast their lives to every single social media outlet there is and pretty much open the doors for people to sit there and talk about them and say bad things. I think that this will be a really good sword to um, read because Allah even mentions it. So anything that Allah mentions in the Quran, there has to be some form of importance to it and there has to be a reason of why Allah mentioned it. And I feel like in our day and age when, I don't know, everything's just about talking about people, I feel like this is a really, 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 really awesome sword to read. And it really pertains to us. Also, Omar Suleiman has an awesome series that he does. And if you want the, um, the information to that, just comment on the video, and inshallah, I'll give that to you. And, and then towards the end of the juz, um, Allah speaks of, um, sorry about that, Allah speaks, up, uh, speaks of a few characteristics of the believers, that they take joy in the things that Allah gives them, that they live a good life. 
They're in the habit of sleeping but little by night. And in the hours of the early morning, they pray for forgiveness. And in the in their wealth and in their possessions, the needy is remembered, meaning that they donate. And when they make money, they think about, oh, how can I help somebody else? And then towards the end, it talks about the story of Ibrahim, alayhi salam. And, it's, and it ends when he's told of the news of him having a son at his old age. And this is how the juz actually ends. And I know I only mentioned like three things in this juz. But inshallah, if you read it, you'll find way more. And if you read the notes, there's way more that I put in there. But it's still awesome if you read the juz. Um, thank you very much for listening. Um, Alhamdulillah, thank you so much. And have a great day. I know that wasn't the best video. But I hope it helped a bit, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum.